Hello everyone. Uh, this afternoon we have just released our financial results for full year 2023. I'm here today with our CEO, Ignacio Maridejos. Ignacio, thank you very much for taking the time to share your views. I'd like to start asking for an overview of the year. So what are the main highlights of 2023? Oh, thank you, Silvia, and hello everyone. 2023 was a good year for Ferrovial. We had uh, an increase in revenues of 13% an increase of our EBITDA of 41%, and mainly supported by your infrastructure assets. Very good performance of North American toll roads with double digit increase in revenues in all of them. We have record year in Dalaman in terms of traffic. It was the third highest in Hydro. Uh, we opened the 3C three months ahead of the schedule. Uh, it was a first year for I-66 with a very good ramp up. It was also good in terms of uh, net cash position for the company as infrastructure with 1.1 billion euros, supported mainly from infrastructure dividends, 741 million euros uh, last year. Also, it was good the operating cash flow from construction business, especially in Poland and also in Spain. Uh, our order book was a record level, more than 15 billion euros uh, last year, and especially is large in uh, North America, but also Spain and Poland, we have a very good order book. It was also a good progress in asset rotation. Uh, we rotated Azores last year, 43 million euros. We reached an agreement also for hydro rotation, parent company, the participation that we have there, close to 2.4 billion pounds. It's still subject to condition precedence, especially the tackle on rights of the other shareholders. And also was the, the year of the listing in Netherlands, in Amsterdam, and application to the US. So it was a good year for Ferrovial 2023. Yeah, you have mentioned uh, the strong performance in toll roads, especially in the North American asset. Could you give us a little bit more color there? Yeah, it was a, it was a very good year for all toll road assets in North America. The 407, the increase in traffic compared to previous year, more than 14%, it was a very good number. It's still below the 2019 figures, 7.5% below that figure. But uh, as we commented several times, Toronto is lagging behind in terms of uh, mobility restrictions when they lift it uh, later than other regions. And also, we announced an increase that was implemented 1st of February of the tariffs in Toronto. After four years in the 407, is the end of the first major. And next year, 2025, will be the first year in which uh, we'll calculate the congestion payments after the end of the first major. In uh, the US, uh, very good results in all four toll roads. In Dallas Forward, the three of them increase in traffic, increase in revenue per transaction, well above inflation. I-66, very good ramp up above our financial model. And the I-77, amazing increase in terms of traffic and revenue per transaction. This one was 28% uh, above previous year. So very good year for toll roads in North America. Moving into airports, new Terminal 1 at TFK, it's still under construction, but you know that it's an asset that the market follows closely. What can you tell us here? Yes, well, NTO, the new Terminal 1 at the JFK is, is on budget and on the schedule, but still we have two years, a lot of work to be done. No? So uh, we have to wait until we open it. But the progress so far is, is very good with the milestones and also it's on budget, so it's, it's very good. In terms of uh, commercial airlines and negotiations, 25% of the traffic in 2027 is good. We are negotiating with many others, so hopefully it will be 100% at 2027 traffic. Uh, we have a refinancing of the, of, the, of, finance, of the facility with a 2 billion bond, green bond in JFK. And also in terms of equity, it was uh, so far it has been close to 270 million uh, euros. Uh, what is left is uh, above uh, 700. And for this year, 2024 will be below 500 million. So good progress so far, but there's still a lot to, to happen in the next year. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, moving to another relevant topic for the company, sustainability. Uh, what would you highlight uh, this year? Well, sustainability, as, as you know, is at the core of uh, our strategy, you know, and we think that it creates long-term value, long value for the company. It, it was this year we see some progress in, in most of our KPIs. In terms of uh, CO2 emissions, scope one and two, we had a 45% reduction versus 2009, that is the reference year, but also an improving versus the previous year. In terms of water consumption, it was an, an reduction of 31% compared also to 2009, that it was the reference year, but also an improvement versus 2022. In terms of health and safety or serious 
uh, incidence and fatality frequency rate had a 20% reduction versus previous year. Also, we had uh, last year our first uh, sustainability link uh, bond. We were also recognized in Spain as a top employer. We got the uh, CDP certification A level both for climate change and for water, considering one of the leading companies combating climate change. And that's the reason we have been for the 20 last consecutive years part of the Dow Jones Sustainability Index and also the last 20 years of the FTSE for Good we have been participating there. It has to be part of your strategy, it has to be part of the way that you create value in the company. And finally, uh, what's next? So what can we expect for 2024? Well, very optimistic also for this year, 2024. We expect increasing revenues also in our main infra assets. Also, we expect that this year we are progressing to our, our goal of reaching 3.5% EBIT margin in construction. Also, hopefully it's a year for growth in new assets. So we are bidding for the SR400 in Atlanta, new managed lane, but also progress in the other six that we have in the pipeline. Hopefully we see progress with the hydro divestment. And also, hopefully this is the year of listing in the, in the US after the uh, SEC, SEC approval. So hopefully it's going to be a, a very good year for Ferrovial to 2024. Great. Well, thank you very much, Ignacio. No, thank you, Silvia. Mm -hmm.